Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, welcome back. Uh, again today with my partner, John Coleman, is Dr. Liz Lister, uh, who is a hormone replacement therapist. But her knowledge of, of things medical and health are so wide, and uh, we constantly get comments on, boy, that really helped me, even though it really had little to do with her specialty because she knows so much about COVID and testing. We've talked about that. But uh, John, why don't you, why don't you see challenge her today? Let's see if we can talk about something that's not spoken about often that we've never spoken about before. Can you think of such a subject? All right. Thanks for that throw, as they say <laughs> in the business. Thanks for throwing it to me, tossing it over. Uh, Dr. Liz, good morning. Hello. Good, good to morning. See you. Lovely to and see you Art, both. Art is absolutely correct. You, your knowledge is very wide and vast. And yes. today, what I want to do, which I think we haven't talked about, is focus on something very, very tiny. And that is these little brown spots on my skin. Oh. And I, interestingly enough, the, my wife and I were sitting the other night. I don't know what, why our we were close together looking at our hands, but she said, how come you don't have anywhere near as many brown spots as I have? So I remember them, my mother calling them liver spots. So mm. what are they? Why do we get them? And in the case of my wife, how do we get rid of them? Or do we want oh, to get rid of them? Maybe, of maybe they're good. Maybe they're good for us. <laughs> no, they're not good for us. Oh, okay. Well, the good news is they're not... They're not exactly good for us, but they're also not necessarily a bad thing either. As you said, they have lots of different names, brown spots, liver spots, age spots. The medical term is solar lentigines. Oh, I'm writing this down. I know, right? <laughs> One of them would be a solar lentigo, and the plural is lentigines. I know, I really had to make sure I was pronouncing that right. But there you have it. And so sun is the main culprit. And I wonder, before we jump in, we talk more about what causes them between what you and your wife have had, your sun exposure on your hands. Or when you're outside working, are you wearing gloves more often than she is, perhaps? No. Is interestingly, enough, she wears, interestingly enough, she wears gloves more often than I do. Okay. Well, fairer skin is a predisposition to them. They are definitely from sun exposure. As most people are aware, when we're exposed to sunlight, the skin makes melanin. They might not be aware of the mechanism, but most people are aware that we get darker skin, at least fairer skin will get darker with sunlight. And that is because of the production of melanin, M-E-L-A-N-I-N, -E melanin. And as we get older, the clearing up of the melanin gets a little bit less efficient and it clumps together. And that is why we end up with spots that you can see. So are those spots particularly dangerous or are they just discolorations? Like if, let's say, you burned your hand on an iron and you might have a scar for the rest of your life, although it's not particularly dangerous, it's just that's the skin got discolored from the... Uh, the iron burn or something like that. They are not particularly dangerous. They do not have a higher chance of turning into a melanoma or a cancer. Okay. They, however, skin exposure to the sun can increase the risk of those other skin problems. But the age spots themselves, the brown spots themselves that are due to sunlight do not on their own have a higher risk of becoming a cancer. You mean my solar antigone or whatever it was. <laughs> Correct. Your oh, solar lentigines do not. Lentigene, thank you. Lentigene, I know. <laughs> Don't I'll worry about it. You've, you've created a monster because this is all I'm going to hear about because I, I, ha I, got, I had my skin problems. Honestly, I had a melanoma and uh, thankfully mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, surgically removed and I'm uh, two years out now and totally cancer free, but funny, I don't have any brown spots. So um, I guess I had that, that one killer spot on the top yeah. of my head, but I used to be in the sun all the time, uh, blue eyed, uh, fair skin, I guess relatively fair skin. And uh, I was brown as a berry every summer, 
probably up until my uh, 30s uh, or, or even beyond into my mid 30s. So I was always very brown, but no brown spots. So how, how do we count for who gets them and who doesn't? Luck, genetic influence is definitely part of it. And also where we live, what the conditions are of the, of the UV light exposure. So if there's areas where there's more UV light exposure, then that can also potentially increase the formation. But I thought so, it would be useful to talk about ways to tell if a spot is something to be concerned about. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Very good. good. Uh, uh, that would be important. You want me to jump into that? Uh, oh, sorry, John, you sounded like you were about to ask me something. Well, else. I was I was just going to. I was just going to say, uh, ask a kind of a dumb question, and that is, it sounds like w we could prevent these brown spots to some degree or other by simply using a sunscreen. Is that correct? That is correct. Sunscreen yeah. helps and avoiding the sun. Those are the sure. two, you know, covering sure. up. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Now yeah. let's get to the important stuff, which is where you were okay. going with this. Yeah. All right. Well, when I was in medical school, we learned A, B, C, D. However, I was looking at it recently and there's A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so it's remembering A, B, C, D, E. And the A is asymmetry. So usually a typical benign, not concerning brown spot is gonna have a nice smooth border. It's just gonna be a little round shape, maybe a little bit oval, but it's not gonna be an irregular shape. So A is for asymmetry. So if it's not a regular border, then that is a concern. That actually brings us to B, which is the borders, okay? So the border irregularity. So that refers a little bit more to if it's raised up in one part. Say you have the flat, you've got the circle, obviously I'm making it really big to show, but like an edge of it is more raised. Anything that's irregular about the border, that is B, okay? So we got asymmetry, we got border irregularity. C is color. If the color varies, so a typical age spot is just going to be an even brown color. If that, if if there's variety in it, if it's lighter or darker in one part of it or another, that's a little bit more concerning. Okay. So we've got asymmetry, border irregularity, color, variety. D is diameter. How big across is it? So a very good reference is a pencil eraser. If it's bigger across, that's about six millimeters. If it's bigger across than a little pencil eraser, that's concerning and worth having a dermatologist take a look. And E is for evolving. Is it changing? Is it growing? Does it look different? I recently went to see my dermatologist for a skin check, even though I'd had one less than a year ago, because I have an aunt who died a long time ago of a melanoma. And so I have that in my family history. And so I keep a close eye. And for me, there was a new, it was a new dark spot that I had not seen before. And it was not in a sun exposed area. It was on my ankle. So I was more concerned about that. So she takes a look at it. You know, the dermatologist has like a little jewelry, like the jewelers use the little the magnifiers. Loop. The loop. The, the loop, thank you. And they're getting a really nice close look. So E is for evolving. Is it changing? Is it growing? or is it bleeding? Anything like that is mm -hmm. worth having a doctor take a look at it. Wow, A, B, C, D, E, good, yes. good things to remember. So, yeah, uh, and I'm sure this, is, this information is all available online if you just Googled uh, uh, brown spots or skin cancer or something like that. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Well, I always say I've never seen anybody go on the internet and feel better. <laughs> So, so, so we do want to be careful of just sending people to the internet to research things, but you're absolutely right. This information is yeah. definitely out there. Do you have a rule of thumb for, let's say, people who have not experienced much of any kind of skin damage throughout their life or they haven't had any issues, by what age should somebody be seeing a dermatologist and with what regularity? Or is there no general rule of thumb? You know, that's a really good question. I, I wonder what the, I think the dermatologist would probably say that everybody should go in at some point or another. I think people can tell when they're at more risk. My, I have lots of redheaded, freckled relatives, and I've grown up with freckles. 
which by the way, also often fade as people get older, whereas the brown spots appear as we get older. That's another distinction to be aware of. Uh, so it's important, you know, if you're seeing on your own body spots that are appearing, then it's time to see a dermatologist to have a baseline check. They do a mole check. They look you over head to toe, undressed, you know, they put a gown on you, but they get a really good look at all of your skin. And that way you've got a baseline to compare it to. Would you say that most, uh, uh, I call them GPs, what, family doctors, uh, most doctors that you would normally see on a regular basis have enough knowledge about these things to, uh, if they see you often enough to be able to say, you know what, I think we should start taking a look at that. Or uh, would they generally have enough knowledge to recognize what those issues are to send them on to somebody else? I think so. I think most primary care doctors would have a very low threshold to refer to a specialist. I would feel comfortable that people would get referred for something that you notice, although it's not something that they routinely do to do that full head to toe, like you said, on your head and bottoms of the feet, you know, just head to toe checking up, which also maybe probably about once a year for anybody who has any kind of changing or evolving appearance of any spots on their skin. Which is sort of so, like the good news is that many of these things are slow growing. That's not always the case, but these are the kind of things that is, what would you catch it within a year of first noticing it? Uh, uh, so if you have a, uh, an appointment six months down the line, you might ask your primary physician, what does this look like to you? Or even if it's on there, and they may at that point alert you to go to see a dermatologist. So uh, uh, people right. should not be afraid of these things that they are relatively, in general, slow growing. But if you really have a concern, get in and get to see a doctor right away. And Absolutely. Art would know. I would know. Oh, he's been been there. That's right. Been there, done that. And yeah, telehealth is fine for this. Telemedicine visits can be okay. FaceTime, whatever technology the doctors are using, my dermatology group uses that a lot. And that makes it very convenient. If something new has appeared, as long as they've gotten that baseline checkup done on you, that's a good way for checking something new that appears. Okay, well, we have sort of like uh, brown spotted our, our way through this conversation. Yeah, it, it, speaking of telemedicine, it, it, really, I want you to look, take a look at, at this here. Uh, but, but, you know, that's great advice, really. The technology does help, does make it easier. And it sounds like, like a lot of things, it's really being aware of your own body and right. watching for changes. Something changes, why did it change? That's when you go and ask ask those questions. Okay. Exactly. Well, thank you again, uh, Dr. Liz, for a fascinating and for some people, hopefully, eye-opening uh, uh, yes. discussion. And uh, if you see a change, go see your primary care physician and get it taken care of because I can tell you, even to the worst extent, uh, most of these things can be taken care of with very good results. And uh, we thank you. Maybe someday we'll get into the, I know that John really, he's shy. We know that John is very shy sometimes. He wants to ask, well, how can he get rid of it? Because uh, he, cosmetically, uh, he, he, he wants to get, he wants to look his young, youthful self. But I think we should save that for another day. Okay, good. Liz, we'll see you soon. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Take care. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.